Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, this talk is about leveraging Gen AI for s seamless developer experience using Backstage. And uh, before jumping to any demo and uh, the details that I'm going to speak about, I would like to introduce myself. I'm Seema Saharan. I'm currently working as an SRE at Autodesk from India. I flew the, uh, from India for this conference. This is my first time in Melbourne. Pretty amazing. And uh, I'm also CNCF ambassador. Um, I've done CK, CKAD. I've done other conferences as well. And, um, and due to all this love for the community, I am uh, also organizer for CNCG Jaipur, AWS user group Jaipur, and HashiCorp user group in Jaipur. That's in India. Yeah, that's about me. And uh, this is my co-speaker, Aditya Soni. He couldn't join us due to some issues, but we have a video of him to introduce himself. Hello, Yogi Australia. Thank Damn. you, everyone, for joining us today for this particular talk Sorry. called as Leveraging Gen AI. So, I'm Aditya Soni. Uh, currently, I'm working at Forrester as DevOps Engineer 2. I'm one of the CSF ambassador. And trust me, this talk is going to help you a lot. If maybe you are starting with a platform engineering journey, or maybe you are using it. So today we're going to discuss more about like how you can leverage Gen AI as an integration with Backstage. So if you have anything, maybe any Q&A, or if you want to have more discussion about same, just click us on LinkedIn. Uh, I was not able to join all of you today there since I had some visa issues, but yeah, see my there, we have prepared demo, PPT, and a lot of stuff. So all the best, have a great day. <coughs> Okay, so uh, I would like to mention a sneak peek of the talk that we are going to have. First is way to platform engineering because all of this topic into backstage, Gen AI, you have to really understand what platform engineering is and uh, what the heck is developer experience anyways. We are talking about this a lot, I think, today. And uh, I would like to take a deeper uh, level of uh, developer experience, how it's going to help um, us in our productivity. And uh, next is to the backstage era, how backstage is helping developer experience. And uh, with the uh, developer experience, how we are going to leverage Gen AI to boost that productivity. And then we are going to see how we can integrate Gen AI to ba Backstage. We have a live demo as well. I, would, uh, uh, I will go through it. I will show what you can do um, in Backstage. And finally, we have how it comes down all together and then the Q&A. First is way to platform engineering. So. Um, Comparing it to traditional DevOps, DevOps is just a, a communication between developers and operations team. But to move it further, we have platform engineering where all the teams, like application team, infosec team, ops team, any technical writer team, come together and they work on the same system. They have a s simple internal developer platform, IDP. And they work in a single platform that's seamless, that increases productivity, that's faster, that's automating, right? Like I said, like centralized self-service capability. So it increases our automation. We don't have any manual work, like uh, we are submitting a ticket and then going to the operations team. We are simply utilizing the automation that's in, uh, that is provided by a platform and focus on improving DevEx. That is the most important thing because you don't want your developers to be just uh, following up with the tickets uh, that we raise and uh, following up with the operations team. That's um, very less productive and uh, it eventually increases the time to deliver your project. So as you can see in the diagram, um, all the teams like App App dev team, infosec team, and ops team comes together in a self-service 
And uh, on the platform, we have different integrations like Jenkins, Azure, any of the cloud provider, Kubernetes, Grafana, all the monitoring observability tools. And finally, all are integrated with a single identity management. So if you, if you want your developers to work like this cat is doing, and um, you have to really work on the developer experience first. So um, it increases the efficiency of your developers, and uh, basically it focuses on seamless developer workflows. They don't have to manually raise the tickets to maybe Jenkins. Because in, all, in big organizations, what happens is there are so many tools, and each tool might have a different level of approval. Like, let's suppose I want to run my pipelines in Jenkins. They will have a separate ticket. They will go on maybe a Slack bot, and then they will follow up. And it takes around a day or two just for getting the access to Jenkins. Similarly, for AWS, there might be some restrictions. and. Um, other observability platforms like uh, Grafana, Prometheus, et cetera. So to reduce all this hectic work, and, uh, and basically it takes around two, three weeks for a developer to get onboarded, rather than focusing on the work that he's meant to do, that is coding. So to improve that, we have all the automated tools, right? And uh, the role of Backstage as a central hub for developer experience. We're going to talk about that as well. So this is a Gartner uh, report that includes software engineering leaders' top goals for developer experience initiatives as per 2024. So they are really focused on increasing speed and productivity, improving software outcomes, because if your developers are working fast, they are not uh, focusing on the, all the manual work. The productivity will, be, productivity will be increased, and eventually your business will be very fast. And engaging software talent. Now, to the backstage era. So Spotify identified all the issues that their developers are taking a lot of, lot of the time to build their applications. And following up with separate teams, there might be some like 10 to 15 teams they have to follow up for each tool. They come up with a solution to merge all of these uh, things into a single platform called Backstage, which then was uh, donated to CNCF, and it's open source now. So since it's open source, we have the power of the community that actively contributes to it. And uh, if your uh, organization is new to Backstage, you can definitely talk to the maintainers. You have the community support. And uh, you can even request for new features as well. So in Backstage, we have a centralized service catalog for all of your um, all of your infrastructure, basically. So for either microservices, APIs, documentation, uh, we have templates as well. Everything is just in a single place. You don't have to bookmark all your um, links, basically, right? <clears throat> so uh, usually what happens is if we don't have such kind of platform, we bookmark each and everything, um, even um, a different environment have different links, right? Dev is separate, stage is separate, production is separate. We have to maintain a lot of things. And documentation is the biggest part, because if our documentation is not correct and not updated, um, we just have to follow up with people. And uh, they might redirect you to someone else. So th there is a lot of procedure for this. So to reduce that, Backstage is the one-stop solution for that. So you can consider Backstage as a supermarket that has everything at one place. And uh, not even that, uh, we also have extensible platform that supports plugins and integrations. So um, today, like the demo includes that uh, use case as well. So we can use plugins we can customize it we can do uh, we can create our own plugins 
in the backstage application. So this is a common um, backstage life cycle. So first, we create a template. And template is basically we can define our application how it's supposed to be. Like, let's say you have to create a GitHub repository, right? So there might be some admins that does that for you. But you don't have to wait for the admins uh, of GitHub. You can just directly go to Backstage, submit your details of the repository, the name, the owners, everything. And with a this, with this single click and just a few clicks, your repository will be created. Similarly, for uh, any infrastructure like Kubernetes, DeepSpace, Kubernetes cluster, et cetera. Then uh, using these templates, uh, we can provision, create, configure, and deploy our application. And uh, we can obviously operate application lifecycle just in a single place. And um, we can document everything at a single place. We, um, we don't have to go to like the usual wikis that we use. So now the main thing is um, how we can integrate Gen AI with Backstage. So um, we cannot deny like Gen AI is booming up. It's growing rapidly, right? We have to use it with, uh, for our own benefit. And uh, we don't want to be lagged behind in this race. So um, we can use Gen AI with automating repetitive stuff. Um, so uh, we don't have to Google it, right? Because sometimes it's just like we want to create a Python application. We can just directly search in the single platform. We don't have to go to a separate or third party um, Gen AI tool. Next is assisting with code generation, documentation, and troubleshooting. So um, you might have heard about RAG, retrieval and uh, um, generation uh, of the code. So with that, you can provide your documents. And um, Gen AI LLM models can understand and give solution to you. So you can just talk to your documentation. Finally, the enhancing search and uh, information retrieval with the platform. So this is the basic infrastructure that we have. So if you can see in uh, this diagram, all the teams like InfoSec, AppDev, IT, Document Docs, and Operations, all are using the same platform that is Backstage. And uh, by default, Backstage runs on 3,000 port. And we have a few core components of Backstage. The first is Catalog. Under catalog, we have different kinds of uh, components, like locations, components, user, group, system, and API. So um, whenever a developer is onboarded, they don't have to worry about like which API do I want to use. They can directly go to the catalog, get the information. Backstage also provides some graphical format that you can understand what is the workflow like for the application. Next is uh, docs. And um, it will include all of your documentation for the application's infrastructure and search. And templates is obviously for automation. You can create any kind of template that you want. If you have to onboard um, some user to some repository, give some specific permissions, um, onboard it to some cloud, etc. So the main purpose of this is developer don't really have to worry about the infrastructure. This will be an abstract to the developer. They just have to focus on the coding. And um, with this, um, I have created a plugin that's running on slash open web UI. So if you don't know, open web UI is basically an open source of um, chat GPT, right? And um, it supports many uh, LLM models, like the first is Olama, um, open source Llama, and Gemma, Mistral, Phi. And uh, there is a Docker container running uh, that has open web UI already running on 8080 port. So what I've done is I have integrated that container, that application, to the backstage. 
so this is the common um, this is the basic in, uh, architecture of what I have done in this use case. Now demo. Sorry. So yeah, um, here you can see like whatever supports your use case, you can just go to the particular LLM model and you can utilize it. So if you see here uh, on slash open web UI, uh, my uh, application is running. And you can create your own account. It will ask to create your account for the first time. And then sign in. And you can see uh, Open Web UI is running in my backstage right now. So we can chat to the LLM model like, hey, what's up? Like general uh, questions, or maybe about coding, how you can create manifest file for Kubernetes. We can ask that. Mm. Tell me the basic uh, example of Kubernetes deployment manifest file. And application name is maybe demo cube day. So this way you just work in a single platform. And uh, it's open source. So um, if your developer wants to use this, they can. And also, some of the features for this open web UI is you can create your own model. And uh, you can choose your base model. Uh, let's suppose you want to use Llama 3.2. And uh, you can add name, model ID, everything. And you can also select your knowledge base. If you have heard about um, Bedrock, they also use the same concept. They have a knowledge base. You have to upload your documents. That the same functionality you can do right here. You just have to upload your all the documents related to, to your application, to your infrastructure. And you can directly use RAG to communicate with it. And it will be much easier rather than going through thousands of documentation alone. Right. And also, it has your uh, chat history as well. So you don't have to worry about uh, what if I miss my old conversation. They already have it. Right. So now, how it all comes together is it enhances the collaboration between the teams. Initially, uh, coming from the DevOps perspective, only developer and operations team were communicating with each other. It's not really efficient in some of the teams. And then we have platform uh, engineering that helps uh, collaboration uh, in a much further way. And that incre increases the developer productivity, eventually the business. And uh, it's scalable and flexible. You have all the monitoring tools in a single place. You don't have to worry about all of that stuff, right? And we have efficient onboarding. So onboarding a user will take very less time now with the, all the automation. They already have templates. They can just directly submit the request, and it will be approved. Then consistent development practices. So since this is a single uh, point of uh, contact right, for this application, so all your environments will be consistent. There won't be any issues when you are deploying from stage to production. Yep. So um, this is a QR code if you want to connect uh, with me and Aditya. Yep. Um, if you have any questions, we can answer that. Um, sorry, I cannot hear you properly. Mm -hmm. uh, backstage, right? 
Yeah. Um, right now, um, I don't think so because it's open source. It's running in my local right now. So we have a concept like to uh, basically if it's in cloud, it will be higher risk for security, right, and data. Um, so the concept is to use local LLMs if it's supported. Right. But if you want to move to enterprise solutions, we have already like Bedrock and other stuff. Yeah, that provides more secure way. Is it possible to use the moment? Yeah, but not in this way right now, yeah. Not in this case, yeah. what are the use cases that you guys are using? Our team is not using it, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Thank you so much.